morning. Happy Monday. It's time for our Bible study, y'all. Um, I, of course, read it early last night, and then I got up this morning, and I started reading a little bit, because it really does hit the highlights. We're covering a lot of ground here in the Word of God with just a few notes, so um, I decided to look into it just a little bit, so I'm going to give you a tidbit, something extra to kind of help you understand. It is Monday the 27th, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> sorry, it's morning, and I haven't taught yet. It is <clears throat> Monday, I'm so hoarse, the 27th of August, and our friend Cindy Peters is having surgery this morning. She's having her mastectomy, and they're going to go ahead and put it in her expanders, so y'all keep her in your prayers because she still has treatments to go. Um, that's Cindy. Jibba Sue had surgery last Thursday, so we need to also keep her in our prayers. Um, now, my cousin has her brain scan. Her PET scan was done Friday and was completely clear, the one with melanoma, so that was good news. So we're going to get started in our Bible lesson, and this is called the Return Era, <clears throat> okay? And the reason it's called the Return Era is because all of the Jews, I shouldn't say just Jews, but the Israelites, which are the Jews, if you'll remember, um, they had a north section and a south section in Canaan, and the north section were in Israel by then, and the north section um, had a lot more tribes, and they, 10 tribes, and they were very evil and didn't uh, follow God's rules, and so they were taken into exile earlier than the southern section, but either way, they were all in exile, okay? So this is called the return era because they're going to head back to Canaan and try to rebuild the Jeru in Jerusalem the temple. Um, so that's what this is about, and it's really strange to me because what started it was not even a Jewish person. It was a, um, a king of the other country. It just shows you how God can work on people's hearts. So um, when you first pick up the uh, chapter 11, he gives you a story of a man who decides to walk across America. His name was Peter Jenkins, and it tells you <clears throat> that he went through a lot of stuff, but he kept on trucking. And um, it says, let's see, his journey was done, and when Peter Jenkins walked into the Oregon waters, he was quite a different person from the one who left his home in Alfred, New York, the trials, the time, the solitude, the people, and the physical and mental challenges transformed him. Um, it says he was little more than a, a young boy when he, or a confused boy when he left, and then he was a man, He when he returned, he was a man. It took him, I think, five years. So um, the return of the nation of Israel, it says, is it parallels in many ways with Peter Jenkins uh, because... Uh, they spent, it says they spent years in solitude and uh, physical and mental torment, which I think theirs would have been worse than Peter Jenkins, but I haven't read a book about him or anything, so how would I know? But they were ministered to unexpectedly by people sent from God, and um, they returned to Israel as sobered people, it says. It says uh, that the return era has four Main sections, just like all the rest of them have had. The first one is disrepair, D-I-S-R-E-P-A-I-R, -E okay? And it talks about, if you want to go ahead and write them all down, you can. The first one was disrepair. The second one is the temple, just temple, T-E-M-P-L-E. -E. The third is people. And the fourth is walls. For the number one, the disrepair, the it's called the destruction from war and neglect. Um, and it talks about they had been taken into exile 
and they the Jerusalem falls into disrepair. That was, of course, a city that they left there, and we know that uh, it's where everybody paid their taxes. Uh, but anyway, it was a mess in because they had had military battles there. They had um, just had a lot, and then so once the people had left, um, what the people that took over did not fix it or repair it. They just left it there. So it was pretty much a mess, um, and it was neglected, and so the city uh, looked bad and couldn't run right or have uh, done anything because it was missing uh, everything. The exterior walls were messed up. The buildings were messed up. So anyway, that's what the first section is about, the disrepair of Jerusalem, okay? And it just says destruction from war and neglect. Now, the second one is very interesting to me. It's the temple, the rebuilding of the temple. And they tell you to read in Ezra 1 through 6, and it says that God prompts Cyrus, king of Persia, to initiate the financing and rebuilding of the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. So he uses a man who is a king in Persia to initiate the rebuilding of the temple, which is really interesting to see how God can get in the minds and hearts of other people and um, have them follow him. So I think that's very, very interesting. Um, it says, under the direction of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, a notable Jewish figure, the rebuilding of the temple is begun. But y'all need to keep in mind that it took years and years and years to build this place. It's not like today, like down the road here in Paulding County, we have a new hospital. And I was going through my treatments when they were building that hospital. And I remember thinking, oh, how I wish that I could have my treatments in that new hospital. And, how I, and, and I can remember thinking, if my cancer comes back, I hope that hospital is done. You know, well... It took two, at least two, two and a half years to build that hospital, but that's nothing compared to the time it would take to rebuild Jerusalem, okay? So keep that in mind. It wasn't a, it wasn't a short thing. So several kings came and went during this rebuilding of that temple. Um, and it says that there was opposition from the Gentiles around Jerusalem. And what that's talking about is, I was reading it earlier, is... Um, once they got another king, and uh, Cyrus was not the king anymore, the people of Persia decided that they didn't want that city to be re rebuilt because they had always been uh, a thorn in their side. And um, so they wrote the king a letter. And the king got the letter. He read it. And, of course, they said in the letter that they didn't think the people of Jerusalem would pay their taxes and that they would lose money and, and valuables by letting them rebuild this city. So that king said, no, you know, stop the rebuilding of the city. And all this is not in our little thing, except that it says the Gentiles around Jerusalem opposed, and that's what I'm talking about. They didn't just oppose it. They wrote a letter to the new king and the new king said, absolutely not, you can't rebuild the city. So then we have Haggai and Zechariah, two Jewish prophets living in Jerusalem, um, and the restoration of the temple is complete. But what he doesn't tell you in this little summary is what happened is Haggai and Zechariah were uh, prompted by God, because they were prophets, to rebuild the city, to start the rebuilding of the city. And they didn't get permission from this king. They just started rebuilding the city. So when several of the people outside the Gentiles saw them rebuilding, of course, they went to the king and wrote another letter. Okay? And this letter, um, I'm going to read part of it to you. Let's see.
Let me go to the next page. Because there was a lot of letters, y'all. To Darius the king. Let it be known to the king that we went into the province of Judea to the temple of the great God, which is being built with heavy stones and timber is being laid in the walls. And this work goes on diligently and prosperous in their hands. If y'all want to read this, it's Ezra 5, in chapter 5, verse 8. Um, then we asked the elders and spoke to them and said, Who commanded you to build this temple and finish these walls? And we also asked them their names to inform you that we were might write the names of the men who were chief among them. So they're just trying to tell on them. And, and thus they returned to us an answer saying, We are the servants of the God of heaven and earth, and we are rebuilding the temple that was built many years ago, which a great king of Israel built and completed. But because our fathers provoked the God of heaven to wrath, he gave them to, in the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the Chaldean who destroyed this temple and carried the people away to Babylon. However, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Babylon, King Cyrus issued a decree to build this house of God. Also, the gold and silver, also, excuse me, also the gold and si silver articles of the house of God which Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple that was in Jerusalem and carried to the temple of Babylon with King Cyrus took from the temple of Babylon. They were given to one named Sheshbazar, whom he had made governor. And he said to them, take these articles, go carry them to the temple site in Jerusalem. So they were letting the new king know that King Cyrus ordered them to build the temple. Not only did he order them to build the temple, but they gathered up everything that they had stolen out of that temple, all the silver, all the gold, all the statues, and sent them back to Jerusalem. I mean, that's a big deal. Uh, you know God had a hold of his heart. So, um, so then they asked, you know, if it be good to the king, let the, they asked the king to search in the treasures to find this decree from King Cyrus. And they found the decree... Um, and so King Darius issued a decree um, so that they could start building again. So, I mean, it was a big, long ordeal, y'all. It wasn't as simple as it seems like in our little study book, okay? I just wanted to read y'all that because to me it just shows how if God wants something, it gets done. That's why so many of us fret and we think, oh, everything's in the hand of the devil and um, but for the most part, if God didn't want it to be happening, for the most part, the bigger things in this world wouldn't be happening, um, uh, because he can control it. Um, it says, so that second one is temple, and of course the rebuilding of the temple, which we just talked about. The third one is people, their spiritual rebuilding, and it just talks about, um, these people had been away from worshiping for 70 years. And a lot of them didn't even remember or had never even seen the law that Moses gave the people because they were in captivity. So, of course, they got instructed of the law. And this was a spiritual uh, rebuilding as well during this time period. Okay. So, and then the fourth one, the walls of the restoration were completed too. And so once they finished the, the uh, city of Jerusalem, they still had to rebuild the walls outside the city to make them safe. And um, that is another story in itself. But Nehemiah is the one who helped complete that. It says, even though all the Jews returned when they could, uh, even though not all the Jews returned when they could have, um, and you can see the book of Esther to see this, it says. Uh, Many Jews are now back home in Jerusalem, and the temple stands restored as the dominant structure in the city. Uh, but the walls of the city are still broken down. And so Nehemiah, Nehemiah another Jewish noble, serving, and I can't even say Artaxerxes, 
king of Persia. Here's another king. There were so many kings during this time because it took so long to do this, y'all. Um, it says he is burdened to rebuild the walls. He is given permission and financing by the king of Persia to do so. In a short time later, the walls frame the noble city of Jerusalem, home of the temple of God. Restoration is complete and the temple is rebuilt. The people are rebuilt. The walls are rebuilt. Thanks to God in heaven, right? So the God of our, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, um, prompted this king to rebuild the city. Um, and of course, it went through different hands of time. And there was, you know, a king that said they couldn't and people that didn't want them to. But in the end, it was God's plan and it got done. Okay. So the people were, could move back to Jerusalem. They could worship in the temple. They were then um, read to the law too. So they knew what God wanted them to, to be and how he, what he expected of them. It was a very good time. Okay. And the walls were rich. Uh, completed. That's the end of our return era. That's what happened when these people returned back to their homeland. Okay? And of course, in our study book, we have a lot of self-tests, the summaries that we always have, and the little summary that goes with the uh, return era, uh, the blanks that you fill in is Ezra, and the blank is leads, L-E-A-D-S, leads, the people back from exile, E-X-I-L-E, -E, which is in the previous section that we studied, exile. Um, that's the blank to rebuild Jerusalem is your third blank. And that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this study. There's a lot of good reading in Ezra if you want to go in there and read it. All of these history, um, we're finishing up. No, let's see. The next one is called the Silence Era. Um, but we're finishing up the history books. And what I like about the history books of the Bible is they're very easy to read. They're very easy to understand. It's pretty much black and white. You should never have a hard time reading the history books because they're, they're just history. Um, and not only history... You know, you're thinking, oh, well, I don't like history, because I don't like history that much. But what's good about it is they're full of really interesting people and stories and miracles of God. So it's really good reading. Um, I hope you all have a blessed Monday. Chris and I have quite a few things to do. Um, so I guess we will see you sometime. He puts on a post every day. My Real Southern Woman really has become more of my Bible study than anything because Chris talks about more of our personal life in his videos on Nichols Retirement Empire. I mean, he, he recorded us in the, in the uh, grocery store last night. Those are the kind of things I used to do. So I don't really uh, video a lot of personal stuff like I used to because he's doing it. And, um, but I know a lot of it is about his time and him remembering things that he went through. Uh, Chris has a really good photographic memory, so he's a lot better at his stories than I am. Because I'm going to be honest with y'all, I don't remember a whole lot about being young. Uh, and the bad thing about me is I'm the kind of person, unlike, which is a lot like men, they say, that my memory is very, um, I don't remember much of anything unless it had a really big impact on me. Um, and most of the time, it's bad stuff. That's the bad part about my memory. I don't remember a lot of just everyday things like he does. But let's say our prayers, and I hope y'all have a beautiful Monday. Uh, keep Cindy in your prayers today uh, because of her mastectomy and also Pam's MRI. Um, let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your people um, and we thank you for Jesus Christ coming and um, for what you did with Paul in the New Testament to show the Gentiles, which are us that aren't Jewish, um, that we can be a part of your family too. And thank you for this era 
that you made um, worshiping you and salvation through your son Jesus Christ open to more than just your people, the, the Israelites. Uh, because without that, we, we wouldn't be your chosen people. But because your son died and you've opened this up, of course, we are part of your uh, church. Just uh, We just thank you so much for today. We hope that you lead God and direct us. And um, in Christ's name we pray, amen. Hope y'all have a good day. I love you. Bye.